dad was in the agricultural business, but he was selling by the truckloads. It was at that time called Bob Jones Farms Incorporated. It was a wholesale operation. But ultimately that didn't work. It was very competitive and we couldn't compete. And we started at these farmers markets and we met Iris Balin Brody and she was looking for quality product, grown without chemical, grown for the flavor. We found a customer base that had an unmet need. They wanted unique specialty items and they wanted them grown the right way. And there wasn't anybody in the United States doing it at that time. The chef's garden was birthed from a place of resilience. It was built from a spirit of humble innovation. The dedication to reinvent and the strength to start over again nurtured in us an intense commitment to being the best at our craft. You know, it was through the farmer's markets that we met chefs. Every chef that came to the farm was a big deal. And even today, every chef that comes to the farm is a big deal. The chefs started requesting even more and more unique and specialty products. They were even uh, bringing seed to us. And the product line expanded very, very rapidly. For 35 years, the Chef's Garden focused on building relationships with some of the best culinary minds in the world. In the midst of the growth and success that came from those relationships, suddenly, the world as we knew it stopped. Every phone call was so painful to take or make because you heard in their voices the fear and the anxiety of what's going to happen next. When restaurants were forced to close, 90% uh, of our revenue went away in three weeks' time. Sticking with those customers was so reassuring that then when they were back, they were so excited and we're their first phone call and you know they couldn't wait to place an order again and, and because of that compassion, they gave that compassion back to us. So even though it was a very dark, scary time, we were in it together and you bond over that moment and we reached so many more plates than we ever could have dreamed of. Our legacy is marked by the parts of us that remain true even in the midst of adversity. From our roots, we have always been a place that inspires the forward thinkers among us. A place that innovates and educates, and a place that never sacrifices the quality of what we produce. In our darkest and hardest of these days, these things defined us. They became the fabric of who we are, and they will continue to guide what we do and who we will become far into the future. They can take our farm. They can take our tractors, they can take whatever, but they didn't take our heart and soul. It's who we are, the integrity, the drive, the commitment to growing the healthiest, most flavorful, nutritious vegetables in the world. Is it a surprise that we're here? No, we got a lot of work to do, but we've got a lot of opportunity ahead of us. Don't worry about increasing sales, worry about helping people, and it will work out in the end. What exactly that will look like, I'm not really sure. And with us focused with a unified vision on the future, it would be hard to imagine where we could be in the next 40 years. I don't know if I can comprehend that. Could dad have envisioned that? Yeah, probably could. I don't know whether I can. We have to be about helping people to the very best of our ability and listening to our customers and then meeting and exceeding their expectations at every level. We still bear the marks of our adversity, forever changed by what we have endured together. But as we look ahead towards a future that is bright and clear, we will remain true to what has always been true to guide us towards the future. Where that future takes us is yet to be seen, but we know that the heart of the chef's garden will always be to grow exceptional vegetables, to care for each other and the land, and to inspire a vegetable forward future.